In this first video, I'll cover um, uh, basically Africa, Iran, Syria, uh, China, and what's going on uh, there. I, the first article I have or story is about these protesters. Um, uh, clashes between protesters and peacekeepers in Central African Republic turned deadly. One protester was killed when the African Union troops fired towards the crowd, while another uh, detailed the lynching of two Muslims. Uh, recently, though, there were supposedly three UN troops or, that were uh, that were killed. Just to at least throw it out there. Uh, peacekeepers opened fire on uh, Central African protesters. It says that the Chad government, that's who the UN... Uh, the UN forces were. Uh, they said that no chatting soldier fired on demonstrators. They basically said that they were linked to the rebels. U.S. getting dragged into the South Sudan civil war. So this is after we heard um, uh, about this recently. Uh, actually, I think it was yesterday where a U.S. military aircraft was supposedly evacuating people uh, was uh, shot at South Sudan rebels blamed for attack on U.S. military aircraft. Four injured in attack on aircraft evacuating Americans as violence leaves, whatever. They say that civilian bodies are sprinkled all over the town. So, like I said before, this is a, a this seems to be part of a policy or planned as far as uh, as far as the Africa agenda goes. Mali to Central African Republic and now all of a sudden Sudan. An official in the region said that the U.S. military had not informed the rebel commander uh, who defected from the South Sudan military this week that they intended to land, which may have led to the attack. So the U.S. is going to see this as them being dragged into the South Sudan civil war. Uh, this is after they deployed 46 troops for evacuations. Obama said that they reserved the right to take further action using military assets in the nation. Officially independent since... Well, that's what they say, mid-2011. Some people say it's a puppet government. South Sudan has had plenty of violence since the major oil fields, which have attracted foreign investment. Attracting foreign investment. They say, uh, as the situation destabilizes yet again, there are calls for the U.S. to intervene to protect those investments. And more on that story, U.S. may uh, act again in the South uh, Sudan. So that's what Obama told Congress on Sunday. And the uh, South Sudan rebels have taken their battle to the oil fields. And just some basic background, uh, at least this is the mainstream narrative. South Sudan has experienced a week of turmoil since the president, uh, Kier of the Dinka ethnic group, accused former vice president, who will include in this report, of a coup attempt. So probably trying to overthrow maybe a Western-backed uh, regime. It says uh, Mr. Makar in turn called on the army to overthrow the president, claiming that he wanted to make himself a dictator and was somebody who mismanages the state. This general who defected uh, declares himself governor of uh, South Sudan. And then here he is again saying that he's ready for dialogue with the government. He said on Monday that dialogue can start straight away if the government releases his detained political allies. Uh, South Sudan's information minister said there's no way we will release anybody who is accused of a coup d'etat. They are criminals who must be brought to the books, so there's no way we can negotiate with them. Only unconditionally. Then moving on here to Syria... Assad saying that he's facing major extremist offensives, pretty much has been for a while there, but I guess it's really elevated recently. Uh, supposedly surrounding these peace talks and getting these chemical weapons out, and that's what we'll cover too. This is terrorism without any limits, an international scourge that could strike anywhere at any time. Uh, he also slammed Western countries who behave with duplicity and act according to their selfish interests without understanding the reality or nature of the Syrian conflict. Around 20 civilians, most of them students and teachers, were killed in a suicide car bomb attack that uh, targeted the school's compound on Homs countryside. So a terrorist attack kills 33 civilians, mostly students. And then there's this uh, story. 42 killed, including children, as barrel bombs hit Aleppo. Uh, and so we'll read through this. The military, uh, Syrian military, attempts to break the stalemate. And as they're doing that in Aleppo, they've tried to use their air power on the rebels. In recent days, 
That meant barrel bombs, and daily there have been large civilian tolls in such attacks. Today there was more of the same with barrel bombs across the province, killing 42 people, including a large number of civilians. The biggest strike was in Hanano, where the bombs targeted a rebel convoy but killed civilian bystanders, including six children. What are these bombs? I've never heard of them before, but they're basically an oil barrel full of TNT rolled out the back of a helicopter. They're powerful but extremely inaccurate and tend to careen off target quite often, which in densely populated territories of recipe it is a recipe for high civilian casualties. As far as the whole battle goes, who's winning, uh, you know, for Aleppo, uh, so far the territory has been changing hands. Either side has been making any progress, at least that's what they say. Uh, Aleppo bombing kills hundreds, threatening Syria talks. So it's threatening serious talks after, they say, 330 people in a nine-day bombing campaign in Aleppo. So it sucks what's going on here. Um, they were, you know, but they say they have to point out that 99 of them were children. Uh, children could be seen running from the school. Well, many of the attacks that happen with uh, drone attacks by the U.S. are targeting just regular male farmers or women and children and elderly people, of course, too. Um, like I said before, when they go to clean up the bodies, usually they go and they wait for them to come take the bodies and clean it up, and then they go and attack them again, purposefully. Um, there's hardly any apologies for it. Um, you know, America often does not even apologize when it kills innocents in drone strikes. They flee the scene like nothing happened, leave the victims even worse off as a result. And I only bring this up because there was a story about uh, Al-Qaeda, whatever, in Yemen. Uh, sorry about the Yemen hospital attack. So they say that the assault killed 52 as a worker of a fighter work of a fighter who disobeyed orders so you know when people read this you're supposed to be like oh my god what's going on that's just ridiculous but uh i think i saw maybe one apology and that was just recently because people are you know they're always pissed off but maybe recently they've been more pissed off in pakistan and afghanistan the top u.s commander in afghanistan apologizes for drone strike that killed children uh, and injured a woman okay so these bombings that it's been made clear that the U.S. is going to, I don't want to say back Assad, but they're not calling for regime change. Um, at least that's what they say public, publicly. Um, then you have, you know, these barrel bombs being thrown out. Well, what's going to happen to that? Uh, is this going to threaten the peace talks? I don't know. Maybe they, maybe it is pretty bad down there, and it sounds like almost like a desperation to, to maintain some kind of... Uh, um, balance of power, I guess, on behalf of the Syrian government and also the Western forces that have normally been backing, backing the terrorists here, that have been responsible for countless numbers of uh, civilian casualties and deaths. So a uh, battle near a Syrian chemical facility endangers disarmament process. So that's the whole thing about the disarmament process, right? Uh, you know, Assad and Syria, they complied with it, but I'm not sure if that's going to be enough. So, but it says a heated battle is underway just meters away from this chemical facility in Syria, warning that the Islamist rebels, terrorists, of attempts to hamper international efforts to dispose of the deadly weapons. They're trying to hamper everything like the peace talks as well. But Britain's saying they're going to help destroy Syria's chemical weapons, and this is as Russia sends 75 trucks to Syria for chemical arms removal. And this is supposed to be aboard a U.S. ship. It's supposed to be some highly complicated process, i.e., uh, like those barrel bombs dumped out of a helicopter, it'll be barrels of chemical weapons dumped out the back of a ship, probably into the ocean. And provide a naval ship. It says the vessel will assist in the safety and security of Danish and Norwegian cargo ships in international waters when removing. So Nor Norway is still going to be involved. They wanted to place it or process it there, but they said no. So they're going to be involved in, in, in transporting it. Uh, Lebanon was asked. Uh, they said no. And then there was another country, I think it was Albania, and they all... A lot of, there's a lot of protest against that, and so that's where they that's why they're doing it now. Okay, uh, Hezbollah's Nasrallah vows to avenge Israel for commander's death. He says that he's confident that Israel is behind the assassination. Uh, then you have just Israel getting ready for short, sharp war against Hezbollah from the 19th. They're preparing for a decisive war against Hezbollah. To uh, you know what it is. Lebanese army, of course, is vowing to counter any Israeli attack. The army shall not yield to any threat, they say. It shall not remain silent on any attacks, says their general. 
And then we have uh, Suzanne Rice, I believe, uh, U.S. plans system to automatically reimpose sanctions on Iran. Iran warns other nations to avoid troublemaking. Those, just a lot of different stories going on here because you have that uh, Rice saying they're going to reimpose sanctions. Obama telling Congress there's no need. Get out of the way, dude. Uh, for new Iran sanctions, then you have uh, this week's introduction of this bipartisan group of 26 senators. A new sanctions bill against Iran could result in the biggest test of the political cloud of the Israeli lobby here in decades. The White House says that the bill could derail ongoing negotiations between Iran and the U.S. and five other powers. Uh, moving on uh, to Turkey. Turkey's Erdogan warns he could expel some foreign ambassadors, talking about the U.S. He says some ambassadors are engaged in provocative actions. Uh, he says, do your jobs. We don't have to keep you in our country. He's revealed threat to U.S. Ambassador uh, Ricciardo. So, according to some pro-government media outlets, told some EU envoys that Washington warned the state-owned Hal Bank to cut its ties with sanctions hit Iran. Uh, supposedly, this is a quote. We asked Halbing to cut its links with Iran. They did not listen to us. You were watching the collapse of an empire. He says in his defense, these were baseless allegations. Uh, finishing up with Turkey, you have, uh, yeah, Turkey was trying to move towards SCO instead of the EU because they haven't gotten in there yet. But, uh, they could go. They're looking eastward, kind of like Saudi Arabia. Repression, corruption make Erdogan unpopular. And so, you know, a lot of people don't like him. And you could see this year, you know, a lot of destabilization going on in Turkey and in Saudi Arabia. Those seem to be two hot spots coming up. Also other uh, Gulf states like, um, like Bahrain. I'm not sure if they'll actually accomplish anything and uh, any kind of uprising, but Joint Gulf Military Command to control 100,000 combat troops. Saudi Arabia has announced the kingdom tries to secure its force in the region following a rift over U.S., or a rift with the U.S. over Iran. So not really sure what to make of this piece uh, posted about uh, Israel and, and the U.S. and military weapons to China. But it seems like a disinformation piece that's U.S. furious with Israel after sale of advanced military technology to China. I think the first thing, because, you know, U.S. is basically, it makes, makes Israel what it is, and Israel and uh, Jews, the Zionist Jews at least, uh, they have a lot of power. I mean, we're just talking about with, with Iran, the lobbying power to actually reverse these sanctions after all that. So, um, you know, it's the U.S. furious with Israel. I mean, come on. The, the, main, the main senators in Congress and all that, they're all pro-Zionist. I think it, uh, there's a lot of propaganda out right now against China, so I think that this is part of it too, a little scare factor. One person commented saying, what, the U.S. puppet regime is furious with owners and masters? Just like a slave saying to his master, F you, I'm not working for you anymore. Then the master will say, uh, you will do what you're told otherwise. Uh, this, I can't believe this either. Uh, this is actually posted from Blacklisted, but China's moon landing appears to be another staged hoax. Uh, I'm not sure about that. Uh, one point that was made was that uh, the technology that is available today would make it a lot easier to uh, to carry this out than, say, 19, whatever, 69 or whatever it was. But, uh, and also, it's it, that it would be uh, a lot harder to land something that was unmanned on the moon than, say, uh, something that was manned. There was also these theories about uh, Russia actually already being on the moon and the, the other side of the moon, dark side of the moon, with uh, some kind of rover equipment. Uh, but going back to this story, uh, it's about building tension. I, I, I don't think China's really a big military threat. That's just me personally, what I've seen of all these articles. Maybe they are, but, um, you know, it, it's good for the weapons industry. And... Um, Remember the whole uh, background picture with the rover that had like a little mushroom cloud over the, I think it was Europe or something like that. I mean, who knows if that was just an airbrush propaganda, airbrushed on there and it was a propaganda piece. Uh, it, and then talking about uh, deflecting what's going on in your own country, they say China U.S. is continuing to upgrade its nuclear stockpile. I think Russia is too, but U.S. also carried out a nuclear test. Speaking of tests, China will require almost a quarter million journalists to pass a Marxism test. That's funny because... You know, it seemed like when I went to college, that's basically what we were doing.
we are being taught, not so much the ideology, but basically to just be a good, obedient um, person, like reading off the teleprompter. And you have Beijing school children poisoned. Now, is this propaganda? Who knows? But drinking yogurt laced with rat poison and herbicide. For the third time in uh, two months, there's a mass mobilization in Thailand of protesters. Thank you.